Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Yes, sir, Commander. Six more like Ocean Pioneer, and we'll have the most modern fleet afloat. Well, that's if my line don't catch you up, Johnson. My company want to cut the overheads by getting at least eight tankers, just like Ocean Pioneer, into service as soon as possible. I can't say I blame you, sir. Three men looking after 120,000 tons of seaworthy steel certainly makes the balance sheet look good. What is it, Collins? The reactor's overcompensating, sir. I'll switch to manual, Collins. I'll trim it. On manual now, sir. All right. Give me your readings as I trim. Zero, five, four, rising. Zero, five, nine, rising. There seems to be quite a large amount of mist ahead. That's strange. Those weather boys don't usually slip up on that sort of thing. There's no mention of mist in their weather report. Zero six three, rising. Zero six eight, still rising, Captain.
Yes, Your Ladyship. Miss Chairman, I can say the men certainly appreciate your doing us the honor today. My pleasure, Lord Worden, I assure you. If you will just step this way, dear lady. A thoroughly excellent vintage, Parker. Excellent, I say. Indeed it is, Stevens. A toast, Parker. A toast to Lady Pennyloaf Crickenwall. A toast, Stevens. A toast to one of England's fairest yeah. roses. Pardon me, Stevens. Cough, dear chap, cough. To her ladyship. Cheers. It gives me great pleasure to name this ship Ocean Pioneer, his letterman. May God bless all who stay in her. A lovely sight. Incredible, isn't it, how they can fit these ships before launching nowadays? Man, she's a beauty. Just take a look at that. Oops! Oh, my bonnet! Hurrah! And now, as Ocean Pioneer the Second hits the water for the first time, the crowd goes wild. Yet, for all the excitement of the day, there must be many whose thoughts turn to the ill-fated Ocean Pioneer One disappeared so tragically only six months ago. Yeah, I'll say. Hold it, Scott. Look, there's Penny. This has been your first major launch. It must have been a great thrill. Oh, indeed it has. The flags, the people, and such a wonderful ship. Although I must confess, the bottle of champagne didn't quite break with the pot that I expected. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lady Penelope. And now, viewers, we leave the shipyards at Clydeside and return you to the studio. Right. All we've got to do now is to wait for Penelope to report in. I wonder if she's found anything interesting. Parker? Parker, can you hear me? L loud and clear, lady. Parker, where did you get the champagne? Well, well, lady, it was such a good year, 1998, it seemed a pity to waste it. So I've I slitched it. I mean, have I slitched it? I mean, switched it. I thought that bubbly didn't hit the ship with much of a bang. Parker, what was it that I launched the ship with? Lady, it was pure chodic water. Parker. I shall have to talk to you about this later. Meanwhile, I've got a message to relay to Jeff. Ah, there's Penny now. Go ahead, Penny. Jeff, my plan to launch Ocean Pioneer 2 was entirely successful. Yes, we saw the whole thing on television, Penny. Did anybody suspect anything? Well, I don't think so. Lord Roden was only too delighted to have me on the platform. How about the ship? Did you give it the once-over? Yes, Jeff. I gave it the uh, once-over, but I found nothing that indicated sabotage. I really believe the ship is in no danger, Jeff. Well, I'm glad to have your assurance, Penelope. Thanks for investigating it for me. You're most welcome, Jeff. You know, despite what Penelope says, I'm still worried about that craft. But, Father, I don't get you. What's there to worry you, Father? It doesn't make sense. Listen, boys. If Ocean Pioneer 1 can blow up in the middle of the ocean for no apparent reason, anything can make sense. You mean, if it happened once, it can happen again? That's it exactly, Alan. I've just got a feeling we're going to hear more about that ship once she's left on her maiden voyage. 
Well, there's no use brooding over it. If anything's going to go wrong, our worrying over it won't prevent it. Well, I'll be... Gee, already? Okay, John. Let's have it. There's a distress call come in from Oahu in the Pacific, Father, requiring immediate action. What's the trouble, John? A typhoon just hit the island, Father, and struck the hospital full force. The foundations are crumbling, and the patients are in extreme danger. Right, John. Brief Scott when he's airborne. This has got to be quick. FAB, switching to standby now. Well, at least it's not the tanker in trouble. Okay, Scott, on your way. Yes, sir. Okay, Scott. Any more information? A tidal wave has undermined the footings of the main hospital on the island. John is still getting details. We'll need Thunderbird 2 with double crew and uh, part 3. FAB, Scott. Leave it with me. Right, Virgil? On your way with part 3. Okay, Father. Alan? Yes, Father? You're due in the space satellite at 1500. That leaves you out. Yes, Father. Gordon? Yes, sir? You'll double crew with Virgil. On your way. Yes, sir. Get brains out here. Right away, Mr. Chase. What do you reckon's causing the interference, Father? Hold it a second, Alan. Virgil's coming through. I don't get it. Virgil's lost contact, too. This could be very serious. Ah, brains. What do you make of this? Hmm. I'm afraid that John up in the satellite is now out of contact, too, Mr. Tracy. I think it only affects transmissions via the satellite. Yes, but it cleared itself then, didn't it? Uh, yes, Mr. Tracy. But the interference signal appears to be much stronger this time. Alan? Yes, Father? You're due to relieve John in six hours anyway. Can you take off now? I guess so, Father. Brains, you'll need information from the space satellite in order to trace this fault, right? Uh, yes, Mr. Tracy. All right, then. I want you to go with Alan. We've got a complete communications blackout on our hands, and that leaves us vulnerable. International rescue could fall down on the job for the very first time. Yes, sir.
All set, Father. Ready, Mr. Tracy. Right. On your way, boys. <laughs> Well, Brains, there's your recording of the interference. But it seems a mighty long way to come just to pick up a reel of tape. Uh, not at all, Alan. For uh, analytical purposes, a recording made outside the Earth's atmosphere is much cleaner. Okay, Brains, let's move. The sooner I get you back to the base, the sooner you'll be able to work out an answer. See you then, boy. See you, John. Oh, and hey, don't forget, you owe me six hours. Yeah, <laughs> see you. Stand by for blast off. Is there no news yet? Mr. Tracy? No, Kirano, not a whisper. That interference is still with us. It's terrifying to realize how much we depend on communication in this rescue business. No, no, you two. You mustn't encourage one another. There's probably nothing to worry about. And Mr. Brains? You haven't heard from him? No, Kirano. We don't know anything. With all this interference in the air, long-distance transmissions are out. As far as I know, only transmissions over short distances are possible. Between Thunderbirds 1 and 2, for instance. I suppose I'd better go and start organizing lunch. It'll be just the four of us again. Yes, Tim Tim, I guess so. Oh, that will be the mail plane, I expect. No, Kirano, that's Thunderbird 1. Tim Tim! You'd better lay an extra place. It looks as if Scott will be joining us after all. Well, not much point in using the radio with this level of interference. Well, Father, I'm coming in now. I just hope that you're ready for me. Scott, how did it go? Well, fine, Father. We managed to shore up all the walls with hydrostats. 
But not before the isolation ward collapsed. Boy, that was close. Any casualties? Oh, no, Father. There were no cases in the ward at the time. Virgil and Gordon, are they all right? Sure, Tintin. And even muddier than me. They should be back soon. We found we could contact each other when we were close, despite the interference, Father. Well, at least that's something, Scott. You'd better go and get cleaned up now, then. Sure thing, Dad. By the way, Mr. Tracy, the intertelecast on Ocean Pioneer 2 is almost due. Thank goodness we don't have to contend with interference from outside transmissions. I'll take a look at the program while we're waiting for Virgil and Gordon to get back. Island dead ahead. All we need now is for Thunderbird 3 to get back, and the whole team is together again. Yes, and let's hope Brains clears up the mystery of this interference. Uh, can I hear the tape once more, Tintin? Coming up, Brains. Right, Tintin. Keep that sound in your mind. Now, listen. And with the first cargo of liquid Alsterine, Ocean Pioneer 2 sails the blue waters of the Mediterranean. Just three men, one ship, and 200,000 tons of nature's latest aid to mankind, liquid Alsterine. Jensen, for goodness sake, we're well clear of port now. Check your radio circuits instead of playing with that confounded siren. Yes, sir. Switch to auto, number two. Auto it is, sir. Pioneer two to Pioneer base. This is Ocean Pioneer two. Are you receiving me? This is Pioneer base at Port of London. Go ahead, Pioneer two. Everything under control. All systems go. Our next check call time for 1,800 hours. Thank you, Pioneer two. Over night. Steering course 259 by 354 at 53 knots, sir. Oh, fine, Jensen. Well, number two, we'll be home and dry in next to no time at all. see you in the laboratory right away, Mr. Tracy. Trouble, Brains? We've traced the interference, Mr. Tracy, but it presents a few problems. Okay, Brains, I'll be right with you. Set it up again, Tintin, but measure the, the quantities very carefully. Yeah, go steady, Tintin. Okay, Brains, let's have it. Uh, just setting up, Mr. Tracy. Can we have the original, uh, Tintin? Coming up. Right, Tintin. Microphone on. Microphone on. Our uh, experiments show that the result of close proximity of a high-density liquid fuel and a low-density substance known as OD60 
produces high impedance waves which can interrupt and cut off radio communication on our bandwidth for a given distance. Uh, a microphone off, uh, please, Tintin. That's the cause. Now, the cure. Uh, 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 too fast, uh, Mr. Tracy. The experiment is not quite finished. No, sir. It sure isn't. All right, what are we waiting for? Observe the contents of the test tubes, Mr. Tracy. By even closer proximity, further chemical action takes place uh, until finally they... Okay, Brains, what does it all add up to? It adds up to a very large explosion in whatever area one finds both A and B. A being Alsterine and B being... Alsterine, you say? Uh, yes, Mr. Tracy. Uh, Alsterine and C fungi found close to the currents of the Gulf Stream, OD60. Used to make dog food, of all things. Uh, uh, Scott, have you got a fix yet? Uh, yes, Brains, but it just doesn't make sense. Working on Allen's orbits and uh, the time of the blackouts, I land smack in the middle of the Mediterranean. Miles from the Gulf Stream and miles from the nearest landfall. This OD60, is it only found in the Gulf Stream area? Uh, I believe so, Mr. Tracy. Oh, Lady Penelope could soon tell us. Penny? How would she know? Wasn't she on the panel to judge the All Pets Poodle Competition? Poodle Competition? All Pets, the only dog food that uses the food that nature provides from the sea. OD60, of course. Tintin, get on to Penny right away. I want to know each location of OD60 and whether any has been found in or near the Mediterranean. And tell her to make it fast. I've got a hunch. A hunch, Father? Yes, Scott. A very strong hunch that somewhere, just about here, there's a great pile of OD-60. But it's more than a hunch that sailing out from here, there's 200,000 tons of Elsterine in Ocean Pioneer 2. Five miles from the coast, Captain. Excellent, Jensen. Excellent. This is Port of London, Pioneer Base to Pioneer 2. Come in, Ocean Pioneer 2. This is Ocean Pioneer 2 to Pioneer Base. Our chart position is 350 by 210. Proceeding at 60 knots. Over. Good progress, Pioneer 2. We'll have a reception committee with... Get rid of that noise, Jensen. <laughs> Lady Penelope, how very delightful. Sir Arthur, it's so good of you to see me at such short notice. It's this doggy book that I'm compiling, you know. Now, in the chapter on feeding, I feel that my readers will want to know more about OD60. Of course, I know we can rely on your discretion. We wouldn't like everyone to know where to trawl for our product. Oh, of course, Sir Arthur. You can rely on me entirely. Thank you, Lady Penelope. Well, now, looking at this map, if we follow the Gulf Stream from its source here and uh, around the coast of Florida, uh, we find the main sources of OD-60. The, the main sources, Sir Arthur? There are others, then? Well, we don't know yet. Look, uh, look at the map. Just look at the distance that we have to transport OD-60. I tell you, the capital costs are crippling to my company. Now, what we have done is to dump 150,000 tons of active OD-60 in the Mediterranean in the hope that it will flourish and provide further raw material uh, for all pets. Then there is OD-60 in the Mediterranean? No, um, we, y y we don't know for sure yet. Oh, well, what a capital idea. 
I promise I won't tell any of the girls at the club. You can count on me, Sir Arthur. I trust the mission was successful, milady. Yes, Parker. Sir Arthur confirmed all our worst suspicions. There really is OD-60 in the Mediterranean. I must radio Jeff at once to warn him. Ocean Pioneer 2 is heading straight for trouble. Ocean Pioneer 2 from International Rescue. Ocean Pioneer from International Rescue. Yeah, it's spreading to the lower frequencies now. Well, it's no use, Father. We'll never get through. All right, Scott. It was just a long shot. Well, I guess it's no use waiting for them to send out a distress call because they just aren't going to be able to make one. Well, what are we standing around for, then? Come on, let's go. Pioneer 2 to Port of London, Pioneer Base. Come in, Pioneer Base. It's no good, Captain. We're just not getting through. Number two, trim your reactor definition. You're two points over. Very good, sir. She won't respond to orders, sir. But Jensen, switch over to manual. I'll trim the reactor myself. Very good, sir. Manual it is, sir. Right, Jensen. Give me your readings as I trim. We're starting to overcompensate, sir. Start your readings, Jensen. Reading 039, sir. Rising. 042, rising. 47, still rising, sir. Speed rising to 80 knots, Captain. Ocean Pioneer 2 to Port of London, Pioneer Base. This is an emergency. It's no good, number two. The reactor's gone too far. Close down the radiation shields. Jensen, steer on radar course 370 by 298. Boy, what a maiden voyage this has turned out to be. Even the weather's deteriorating. <laughs>
Steering on radar course 370 by 298, sir, at 85 knots. 85? The engines won't stand it. They won't stand it. Jensen. Jensen. S sir? Radio, Jensen. Call International Rescue. It's our last chance. We can't last long without air. International Rescue. M must call International Rescue. Okay, Virgil, I found her. She's drifting off course toward the danger zone. Well, there's quite a lot of mist around, too, which is going to have matters. can hardly hear you, Scott. This interference is really getting worse. I suggest we keep radio contact down to the minimum. F-A-B. I'm going to try to land on the deck. International rescue. R radiation shields in position. Air supply failed. Over. Gee, it's getting real thick. I hope Virgil's not far off. Take a look at that. Terrifying, isn't it? This is International Rescue. This is International Rescue. If you can hear me, speak in the direction of the lower port bulkhead. We're never gonna find a tanker in all this. See if we can get through to Scott and home on his signal. Thunderbird 2 calling Ocean Pioneer. Come in, Scott. Nothing. Now, where the heck is Virgil? We can't afford to split up now. That's him. Calling Virgil. 
In Thunderbird 2. Calling. Thunderbird 2. There he is. Come in, Scott. Where are you? Uh, I can hear your motors. You're somewhere over to the starboard side. Now, steer five degrees to port. There she goes. Okay. Now, let's hurry it up, fellas. Not a moment to waste. Okay, John. On your way. Right, Virgil. Keep her steady. Okay, Virgil, as soon as John hits the deck, stand well clear till I send for you. How's it coming, Scott? I nearly there, John. Here it comes. shape, Scott. Yeah. Now, come on. Just look. Well, this can only mean one thing. We must be right over the OD-60 now. by and step on it or we might not be around when you get here i'm on my way how's scott getting on he's bringing around the crew captain can you hear me call international rescue it's a uh, tell me how well i sure hope you're right captain <laughs> Virgil, you're right above us. Start dropping. Look out! Hold it there, Virgil. Okay, Virgil, down rescue gear. Captain, lead your men off the ship. Young fella. I just want you to know... Sorry, Captain, no time right now. Your ship is about to blow up. It's what? Okay, Virgil. Pull away. And you make it snappy. F.A.B. Scott.
no sign of him anywhere. Thunderbird 1 from Thunderbird 2. Come in, Scott. The interference has cleared, but Scott doesn't answer. He just got to have made it. Thunderbird 1, come in, please. Do you read me? Loud and clear, Virgil. Okay, let's get out of it. See you back at the base. I still say that 120,000 tons of ships stand for a heck of a lot of capital investment, Scott, and we should have tried towing her out. Sure. Oh, sure, boy. But do you reckon we could have made it in time? Who knows? That's all part of the game, isn't it? Now, hold it, boys. John, how many rescues have you been out to? Well, I, I guess about a dozen, Father. Scott? All of them, Father. Okay. And yet you still argue. Oh, we weren't arguing, sir. No, we, we were just discussing it, Father. Listen. For many years now, man has worked to perfect the material things in this world. And he's done pretty well for himself. If a building falls down, he can soon build it up again. With life, it's different. And this is why the object of international rescue will never change. Your job is to save lives that are in danger. And that's how it's gonna be, always. Got it? Well, that's uh, okay by me, Father. Yeah, yeah, sure, Father. <laughs> okay. Go and dip your hot heads in the pool. I want to read my book. <laughs> Thank you.